It's all well and good to have high aspirations for a big horsepower MX-5 Miata, but don't forget you do need to feed that horsepower with fuel. So today I'm going to upgrade my fuel pump and rail on my MX-5 track car. G'day folks, my name is Brendan. Thanks for visiting. Of course, you may have seen in the last episode I spoke about the dyno time we had on this car. And how we unfortunately just ran out of fuel pump in the high RPM range where we're hitting sort of 300 plus horsepower and the, the pump that's in there just can't keep up. So today we're going to remedy all of that with some new pump gear, new fuel rail, maybe, I'm not sure if I'm going to run this yet, and even a fuel pressure regulator. I'll also do some wiring changes and things so that everything should hopefully be sturdy and we'll have no trouble feeding this bad boy and feeding the engine. So let me show you all the gear that we've got to go in this car. So a small collection of goodies that I've slowly been acquiring over the last few weeks. We'll start off with the fun stuff. The new fuel pump. I'm running a Deutschworks DW200 at the moment. This is the 300. This should be uh, well and truly beyond what I'll ever need in terms of fuel pump. But hopefully this bad boy fixes my, uh, my leaning out issues at the high RPM range where the 200 just can't quite keep up with ethanol and big injectors and 300 plus horsepower. To go with the pump, I've also got a new relay and an inline fuse which I'm hoping will help because of course the OEM one is known to sort of get a little bit sad and suffer when you start to run a big pump that uh, demands a lot of electricity so we've got this stuff to uh, attend to that and of course to keep the fuel pump in order a aftermarket fuel pressure regulator that will feed nice consistent fuel pressure to the fuel injectors in the fuel rail and I've got a collection of fittings to go with it. Obviously with this regulator, I will need to find it a home uh, different to that of the OEM one, which lives on the fuel rail itself. And speaking of fuel rails, I do have this old aftermarket rail lying around that I don't remember exactly where I got it, but nonetheless, it's sitting here and we can potentially use it. In this case, it's a, uh, a good choice for, for our needs here. It's dual feed either end, and there's also a central port there. Potentially you could have dual feed either end and then uh, a return in the middle. I'm just going to feed in one end and out the other. That's sort of the way the OEM one is run, so we might as well keep it simple, stupid. Uh, all of that needs to go on the car, and obviously the OEM rail has the fuel pressure reg on it at the moment, so the rail and the reg will come off, and we'll need to do a little bit of adjusting to get fuel lines to work. And the last thing I've got from an electrical standpoint uh, these uh, bulkhead style connectors that I made up and the purpose of these is hopefully avoid any potential voltage loss or anything through the connector that connects the wiring into the tank and down to the pump so the point of these is to uh, offer, offer a much sturdier fatter connection and reduce any voltage loss nice big fat connectors a little bit finicky to put together, uh, a little bit finicky to use, but they'll be much sturdier than uh, OEM than the OEM connector. So first thing to do is to get this tank carrier out and we can get to the fuel pump underneath. Then we'll remove, well obviously to do that we'll need to remove the two fuel lines and the electrical connector. We can drill a couple of holes in there for our new bulkhead style fittings and we'll run the new pump in and throw this all back in. It'll be fairly easy, hopefully. And now, because you've got a tank full of fuel, put something over the top just to stop anything getting in. I'll just leave that there while we work on the other right, other end. This is the fuel pump carrier assembly plus the fuel level, which is this float here on an arm. If we flip it over, we've got two connectors up the top here. The blue one is for the pump, which will disconnect. And we won't be using that anymore. As I mentioned, we're going to uh, make our own bulkhead fittings. But you can see 
It's a fairly small connector and a fairly small little spade in there. The point here we're trying to achieve is keep it bulky. So we've got nice fat wires that'll prevent any uh, voltage loss, any amperage issues, any of that sort of stuff. We can disconnect the wiring from the pump side, hopefully. To remove the pump, there's a screw on here on the side of this carrier arm. And it loosens up everything there. And then we just need to disconnect the rubber hose. Give it all a wiggle. And the old pump is free. We've got a new sock, so we'll leave this one attached to this pump. We've got a new sock for our new pump. We can set all that aside. Now we need to decide where we want our new bulkhead type fitting. We need a couple of uh, five, six, seven mil, whatever it is, holes in a convenient location that will allow these to pass through. We've now got our pair of holes drilled, so it's time to get our new pump. Physically, it's pretty much identical to the old one. Maybe a little bit larger in diameter. New bits and pieces to suit this particular car. So we've got a sock that fits this car. We've got the bottom rubber, which also fits this car. So definitely worth getting the right stuff. You want to get the right sock for the car because running the wrong sock, you'll have surge issues and pickup issues. To assemble this, it's pretty straightforward. This goes straight onto the bottom of the pump and just gets pressed on like so. And then there's a little retaining clip. So they do send you a new one, there it is. It's a pretty finicky little thing. You've got to get it on the, the metal ring goes on the little plastic stub that pokes out of the pump. With the sock on, the clip on, we can put the new rubber foot and then the metal retaining cap goes on there. We need to get our new piece of hose on the end of our pump. So that slides on nice and easily. Slide on our two clamps. The hose needs to go up our feed ho uh, tube on the carrier here. And as we slide it up, eventually the screw hole will line up at the bottom here. You can put this Phillips head back in. And that's the assembly more or less redone. We now need to do the wiring side of things. And so the kit comes with a new length of wire. With our ring terminals ready to go. I can clip this into the pump. And then we just need to feed these bad boys out through these holes via our, uh, via our bulk head connector. You can see our two new connectors or bulkhead type fittings. You can excuse the filing marks. It was kind of tricky to get a little file in there. And then on the other side, you can see here roughly how they're attached. And of course, we've got the nylon spacer with the O-ring to prevent it from shorting out on this base. And obviously to uh, keep fumes and fuel in the tank and not getting leaking through here. There obviously will be a little bit of leakage, uh, potentially, it's just a fact of the matter, but pretty cool and a lot bulkier than those tiny little pins that we were using earlier. You know, that's a lot more sturdy than a teeny weeny little, teeny weeny little pin. This can now go back in the tank and we can button that all back up because you don't want to leave that open for too long, obviously, it's full of fuel. So we'll get this thing bolted back up. Now how cool is that? We got Four nice big wires feeding into this connector. I really can't expect that the pump would overdo. That is gonna be sturdy. We've got our two bulkhead connectors here. It all is a pretty stealthy result. I've now got a couple of new wires that we need to feed for a power and a ground. I'll go and mate those up with the OEM stuff at the other end and then we'll put in our new relay and then run a nice fat wire over to the battery. So I've just done a whole heap of rather congested work here in the cabin. It's pretty hard to uh, 
well definitely hard to film it's pretty hard to do because it's so squishy and I can't take the roof off on this car and so therefore you've got a rather cramped cabin space nonetheless we've run the two wires along here the second ground effectively which is grounded off just over there in the sort of wheel well area and then the other new mains wire has run all along here down uh, along the roll cage there then it comes up near the, pass, uh, the driver's side feet up around the steering wheel you can see there's a whole heap of a jumble of mess of wires there at the moment from what I've been pulling apart to trace all the wires and get it back to the OEM relay so the OEM relay lives up under here somewhere normally I've removed that disconnected the wires and normally it's really kind of dodgy there's two power feed wires in one for your uh, your coil and one for your common but unfortunately common and the coil are paired and they splice off further down so that's kind of why you get a shittier power source to your pump than you would like and it's all because of the way the relay set up under there so what we've done we've removed the power source that would normally go to the pump from here and I've instead traced it from the other side of the kill switch here so that a wire runs out down under the transmission tunnel up to the underside of the kill switch and that way we're getting good manly power straight from the kill switch up to the relay and then from the relay all the way to the pump here. I've had to do a bit of cutting of the OEM loom to make that work and to get the relay to do what I want it to do but the important thing is we've got I've got my bucket battery attached here to my what are these Anderson plugs the important thing is if we flick the switch you can hear the fuel pump primes let me try that again so you can hear the fuel pump prime you hear the relay click awesome so pump and awesome upgraded wiring all done now that the fuel pump and its wiring are sorted it's time to tackle some of the stuff under the bonnet here so we've got our new fuel pressure regulator and a new rail to feed fuel to our injectors and I've also got some length of hose here which will connect it all up this should be fairly straightforward it's all kind of bolt on stuff there are a few sticking points though particularly you've got to fight for room on the intake side of the engine bay here to mount this to mount this regulator somewhere useful but convenient I like to try and keep things neat and logical so I don't really want fuel hoses running all over the engine bay here just to mount this somewhere that makes it look pretty uh, the only reason I'm really running this rail is because it's an easier way of blocking off what would normally be the OEM rig on the OEM rail the, um, the stock rails don't really have any flow issues they seemingly will service most cars and most power levels uh, the only reason that this is easier is because it deletes the extra reg that's on the OEM rail. Uh, this is an NB2, however it's a Japanese import, so it runs the return system, not the returnless like all the people in the US got. And here in Australia, normally all the NB2s or NB8Bs onwards got a returnless system. Uh, all of the 99 to 2000 NB8A models in Australia were return. Um, whereas all of the US cars, I, as I understand, all the NB US cars were all returnless. Anyway, all the information out of the way, time to get the top half of this manifold off. Let me bring you over here, show you the stock stuff, so the original OEM rail and where the fuel pressure reg is on the OEM rail, where the feed and return lines are, and then we can start thinking about what we need to do to make this work with the new stuff. Okie dokie. Obviously this is your fuel rail. It bolts down with three bolts here, and they have little spaces behind there which are a pain. Don't lose them. This is the fuel pressure reg or the dampener. Uh, it depends on the year and the model and uh, what sort of location you're in but in my case this is a pressure reg and attached to it you can see the little hose clamp or jubilee clip here this is the rubber return line which runs down it actually runs up through my flex sensor and then back down through the hard line here um, back to the tank 
The feed side comes up here as well, feeds underneath the intake manifold and the feed into the rail is just in behind here also. A bit hard to show you, but there's a, so there's a feed into the rail that runs along this hard tube. You can actually see it come up over the rail there, it runs along this tube and feeds into the back side of the rail. So it feeds in here, squirts through your injectors, hits the pressure reg, the reg dampens and uh, maintains pressure and then feeds any excess fuel back out through the flex and away we go. So we're going to remove the rail, the reg, the two rubber lines that come back over to the body and then from there we'll add the new rail and we need to work out our plumbing. So first things first, pull the old rail and the old rubber lines off. Now, if I uh, think about where this rail wants to go, it looks like the feed line, which comes from down here beside the right-hand side frame rail, will happily feed up through behind here and straight into this rear barb. It all looks pretty nice and angled all happily. Let's get the rail in first. We can do this feed line on this side and then we can play with the return line once everything's plumbed up. Okay, so I've been spending a, probably a good hour fluffing about trying to work out exactly where I want everything to mount and how I want to run all the plumbing. So that means I need to get the fuel from the uh, fitting on the rail over to this area somewhere for the regulator. Um, and after a little bit of thinking, I've realized I can run a hose underneath through here, basically have this thing positioned right here. Now, I did need to change the fitting on the end of the fuel rail here. I had the 45 that was just the random one that came with the rail. I don't know where it came from, but I found that this 90 degree bend is much better. The other thing I did do is, so this mounting bracket, which came on the regulator, I turned it around, flipped upside down and cut a quarter of it off. And we're just gonna use one bolt hole here. It'll bolt into this bolt hole up here that I've got. And the reg will fit nicely there. The other thing that was interesting was I test fit the uh, the top half of the manifold back on just to make sure it would clear around this uh, this port for the outlet of the rail and I noticed that it actually binds up on the fitting here and yeah I had to actually shave the shave this plug down a little bit so I get the manifold to sit nicely. It's still super close to it but uh, it all now fits up. Uh, yeah, so time to run some plumbing. Now these fittings are uh, pretty tight to get on, so just a little bit of lube and uh, hopefully this will slide on. Now, uh, oh, whoop. before we go any further or we try and reassemble this, I think I'll prime the fuel pump a few times and try and build up some pressure and we'll see if anything Leaks. I don't see any leaks. Oh, hang on. Have we got a leaking injector. Something doesn't quite look right here. Let's do another prime and see what happens, eh? Took the injector, the fuel rail off too many times and we've Balked up a seal. Yeah, well, if that's the worst of today, then I guess that's not too bad. Now, need to pull this vac line back 
What I'm going to do is feed it straight through the firewall to the rig here and I've got this little T which I was using before so we'll put the T in more or less like this and then run a single line following this return fuel line along up and back to where the original one lived up on the top half of the manifold. So this bad boy will T into here that obviously feeds straight into the reg and then this end will feed off to the uh, well effectively your boost reference or your map reference will come through here. Um, this goes back to the ECU. You're laughing. Now this will go up under the manifold. I think it's time we install the rest of the intake. Time to finish this off. So everything's now buttoned up. It's time to check our pressure. We can do that because I've got the pressure sensor plugged in and it's uh, the same sensor that I use for oil pressure. So I'm actually feeding it into the oil pressure input on the ECU at the moment. So we can check it on the ECU. We can use the um, Junior Studio software to trigger and turn on the fuel pump manually. So we'll do that with the car uh, off. Let's have a check of uh, fuel pressure and see what values we're getting it uh, without the car running. We can adjust it from there, and then of course we'll start the thing up and make sure there's no leaks and that it's all running okay. Uh, I'm going to aim for around about 50 PSI. The OEM stuff's apparently around 45, so we're a little bit higher in pressure. More pressure generally can uh, makes uh, more atomization of your fuel or better atom atomization of your fuel. However, uh, it has more de more of a demand on the fuel pump, so you can't just insanely go off the off the charts with pressure because you've got um, uh, limitations of your fuel pump. And yada yada yada. I'm not going to go into it because I don't know it all. I just know enough. 50 sounds like a nice compromise for me. It also means you have to retune your car, but in this case, we're going to take this thing back to the dyno for a final run anyway. So a little bit of extra fuel for now uh, won't be a problem. So let's check out pressure and then start it. So our reg has the pressure sensor plugged in, which is awesome. And then if we go into the car, we've got the ECU connected. You can see fuel pressure up here at the moment. If I trigger the fuel pump on, we see fuel pressure at around 48 PSI. Off. I'll disable test mode, close this window, and let's see if we can start the car. And we can see there, clearly with uh, that vacuum pressure against the rig, we're dropping down to 40, so we're a bit under fueled. Uh, with the car in this state. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wind up the pressure a little bit. So clearly that um, that pressure in the non-running state is because we're not at vacuum. Um, so we'll bump it up to back to around about the high 40s, which is where I want it. So to adjust pressure, we back off the lock nut there and we wind in the pin and then we'll lock it back up. Let's go check where we're at now. So back into our test mode, enable, and we turn on the pump. And we're now seeing about 54 psi of pressure at this uh, non-running state, which means that we should safely see around 46 to 47 when running, which is perfect. That's just what I want. Thanks, laptop. Oh, check engine light. <laughs> Probably because there's no oil pressure. Uh, but we're now seeing around 47 PSI. Just what I was aiming for. 
which is good. Let's go and have a quick check for any more leaks or anything. So our rig looks pretty good. I've now locked off the nut here so that uh, pressure's can be set, won't change. Ah, we didn't have our flex plugged in. I'll plug that in a little later. I don't see any leaks here. The injectors are ticking away. They have a real strong tick to them. So that's pretty common now. Oh, it seems to be working the way it should. That turbo school noise. Awesome. And then we can kill it. Well, and well, there we have it. That's kind of the last link in the chain for what is now effectively a 400 horsepower capable fuel system in this car. Definitely at the moment don't have any intentions of going anywhere near the limits of it. Um, as I mentioned, sort of 300 horsepower is probably the mark for now until we know that the driveline can handle anything more. At this point, the car needs to go back for a final run uh, on the dyno. Only a couple of hours, hopefully now, just to finish things off and get it all buttoned up. We have increased fuel pressure just a little bit, so that will require some slight adjustment in the fuel map, but whatever. Who cares, she's running and it's, it's going great. I won't drive it anywhere crazy until we get that fuel map dialed in properly. So uh, yeah, gotta get back on the dyno tuner right now and book it in. Uh, we say goodbye to the old fuel rail. Unfortunately, this stuff is actually really quite capable and it's so simple. I wouldn't have upgraded it unless I really needed to. It's just, the fact of the matter is this pressure reg isn't going to be able to handle the DW300 pump that's now in there. But we've got the 300 pump, we've got the Raceworks fuel pressure reg, we've got the mystery unknown brand fuel, uh, fuel rail, we've got the Flowforce 960cc injectors. It's all pretty capable, really good quality stuff. Yeah, she's in a happy place. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps you if, if you're making any decision, decisions on your fuel needs for your turbo boosted, supercharged, naturally aspirated, whatever it is, MX-5. Uh, this gives you a bit of an insight and into what you can do for your car. And of course, there's just so many options out there on injectors, pumps, rails, all of that stuff. So uh, don't take what I've used as, as gospel. Please do your research. Search on the other turbo forums and things. Have a look at what other people are using. Uh, but generally, the respected brands and the products that work, they're usually the ones that most people use. It's running. Back for the dyno. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.